Hi there, this is Chris, Chapman the Cap Motor Legends. Today I'm going to talk you through what we consider to be the top 10 short motorcycle ankle boots on the market. Now, whenever I do a review like this, I'm at pains to point out that because we don't do every brand on the market, we can never be truly definitive about whether we've found the best boots. Now, we do try to work with the best brands, so I think my view would be that if there was a particularly worthwhile boot out there, I would go and source that boot, even if it meant taking that one boot from that particular brand. But the truth is that I cannot be definitive about the boots that we're gonna talk about today being the very best top 10 boots. Anyway, if you like what you hear, if you like what you see today, don't forget, please like and subscribe. There can be no doubt about it. Many motorcyclists are turning their back on traditional full height touring and commuting boots in favor of shorter, easier to wear ankle boots like these. I suppose it's not difficult to understand why. Now, back in the old days, all motorcycle boots were tall. Whatever kind of bike you rode, whatever kind of riding you did, you bought a pair of calf length boots. But that was when we all wore leather or textile suits, the bike might have been our only form of transport and not everybody was flush enough to have different outfits to match different conditions or indeed a stable of different bikes. It was jeans more than anything else that pushed people towards short boots. You wear jeans to be comfortable on the bike and to adopt, I suppose, a more casual approach. And it didn't, and for some people still doesn't, look right to match a pair of jeans with a full height boot. In fact, with single layer jeans being so strong these days, what we're seeing is a lot of people commuting and touring in jeans. And those people will still often wear a taller boot with their jeans. But nonetheless, the ankle boot is the direction of travel. And it's undoubtedly the case these days that short boots outsell tall boots. The truth is that ankle boots, short ankle boots are more comfortable, they're nice to walk around in, they're easy to ride in, and they're more stylish. These days, I suppose we wanna be able to get off the bike and then perhaps go for a hike or go for a wander around town. Sitting down for lunch, by contrast, in a pair of Daytonas always looks a little bit odd. And let's face it, if you then wanna get off the bike and go for a walk, a tall boot is never gonna be your best option. But when you buy a pair of short boots, you need to be aware that you are making sacrifices. There are trade-offs that need to be confronted. A short boot will not be as protective. Now, the main footbed, this bit of the boot, may be just as strong on a short boot as on a long boot, but the lower shaft of a short boot will mean that your shins and your calves are going to be more exposed. If in an accident, the lower half, half of your leg comes into contact with something sharp, something hard or something abrasive, a short boot may often be found wanting. It does not matter how strong or protective the short boot is. A taller boot will nearly always be a safer boot to ride in. Every time Sarah and I go on tour, choosing the boots that we want to ride in is always the most difficult gear decision to make, especially if we're going somewhere hot. So last Christmas, for example, we went to South Africa. No, last year we went to New Zealand. The year before we went to South Africa. Now, both were solely on-road tours. I wanted so badly to wear my Klim Outlanders, but ended up sticking with my Daytonas. And that was purely down to the fear of the consequences of what might happen if I came off the bike. The other truth that has to be confronted with short boots is that there will be a compromise on waterproofing. Now, we're fully aware that most short boots come with a waterproof membrane. Indeed, many come with the very best Gore-Tex membranes, but a short boot will never be as waterproof as a tall one. And that's because when you're riding down the road in heavy rain, the rain will bounce off the road and it will find its way over the top of the short shaft of a short ankle boot. Now, sometimes it does this by wetting the lower part of your jeans or your textile pants and eventually the water that has been soaked in by those pants will then run down into the boots and reach your feet. That cannot happen, of course, if you're wearing a taller boot. The rain simply cannot bounce that high. There's another slight issue with short boots. If you're wearing waterproof over trousers, and I have in mind here in particular our Scott waterproof trousers, they won't always seal, the elasticated bottoms won't always seal around the very short shaft of an ankle boot. And so what can happen once you're doing a proper speed, the elasticated bottoms can simply pop off the boot and that's gonna allow rain to reach the feet. Not in our view a problem with the waterproofs, it's merely a result of the fact that you have chosen to ride in a short boot. They're never gonna be as waterproof. Now, 
The way we see it here today, we're not telling anybody anything that they didn't know or couldn't have worked out for themselves. But bikers do have a tendency to spend perhaps too much time on the internet taking in only the information that they want to hear. And so they get to believe what they want to believe. Every single day here in this shop, we end up bursting people's balloons. People wanting us to confirm that a short boot is going to be every bit as protective and waterproof as a tall boot. Well, sorry, but by and large, that is not going to be the case. And that's fine. If you want to ride in a short boot, go ahead. I do a lot of my riding in short boots, but you need to understand what the trade-offs are. A shorter boot, as we've mentioned already, is going to be nicer to ride in, nicer to walk around in. A short boot will often look more stylish, especially with a pair of jeans. But when you decide to ride in a short boot, you will sacrifice a certain degree of protection and a certain degree of waterproofing. Accept that and you won't be disappointed. Anyway, what we're going to do now is talk through our selection, the top 10 short boots as we see it. Now, here's the thing. There are many, many hundreds of short boots out there on the market. We alone as Moto Legends offer about 100 different styles. And most of them, it's got to be said, are much for muchness. They will all have protection in the ankles. They'll all have a counter in the toe. They'll also have a counter in the heel. And that's because under the CE regulations, that's what a motorcycle boot has to have. Now, in general, we do not like the aphorism that you get what you pay for. In the world of motorcycle apparel, that's not always the case. We often here in the shop come across people who have spent, I don't know, two grand or more on a rucker suit or a klim suit who would have been better off spending half as much money. But with a shorter boot, there is perhaps a case for spending a little bit more. Now, all the boots that we're going to be talking about today are just better made than most. So if you spend, I don't know, 250, 300 pounds or more on a pair of boots, there's a good chance that you'll be wearing them in 10 years time, especially if you look after them, give them a little bit of TLC spend much less than 200 pounds, and I think you'll be lucky to see, I don't know, three years out of them. The leather will be lower quality, the soles will be less rugged, and such boots will be glued together rather than sewn together. In this particular sector, the short boot sector, I think a little bit more money can go a long way in terms of extra quality. And I suppose that kind of makes sense. If you spend an extra 100 pounds on a six, 700 pound suit, it's not gonna give you much more, but spend an extra 100 pounds on a pair of boots, and it will do. The Klim Outlander is the ultimate expression in our view of a style that's known as bike and hike. Basically this comes out of the adventure world and it's all about boots that once you reach the trailhead you can then undertake a hike in. So you've got the proper protection of a motorcycle boot combined with the comfort of a walking boot. The Outlander has a Gore-Tex membrane. So under the terms of Gore's guaranteed to keep you dry guarantee, these boots are guaranteed to be waterproof for life. The boot is made partly from leather, partly from synthetic materials. You get D3O style pucks in the ankles. There's also this same material in the tongue. You also have the mandatory counters in the toe and in the heel. There's a polycarbonate shank in the sole, and that's to give the boot a little bit of extra transverse rigidity. Boot's got quite an aggressive sole that's gonna help give you grip on loose surfaces and in the mud. But the boot's USP is undoubtedly its BOA lacing system, which is just so easy to oper operate. You pull this apart, you can open the boot to tighten it, you push the button in, wind it up. Honestly, if you've got BOA, why would you ever want laces? It makes getting in and out of the boot just such a doddle. The boot has a pretty wide fit, it's got to be said, but here's the thing. We have sold over the years several thousands of pairs of Outlanders, and I'm not sure we've ever had a single pair return. Now, I've got to say, I may be wrong on that fact, but it remains the case that this boot is horribly robust and horribly reliable. It comes in four different colors. Availability from Klim, however, as it is on many Klim products, is an issue, which is why right now, as we record this, we've got nearly 500 pairs on their way to us. The Daytona AC Classic is not an adventure boot per se, but we still think it reflects that phenomenon that we were talking about before, the bike and hike phenomenon. And that's because the boot is basically based on a walking boot. Being a Daytona, it is of course a little bit over-engineered and we'll maybe touch upon that later. The boot has a new buck outer chassis. At first sight, you might think that the boot has a Goodyear welt, and the trademark of a Goodyear welt is a sole line here at the top of the sole, and maybe another line through the bottom of the sole. And you've got both of those here with this boot, but actually this has a faux Goodyear welt. It's not a real Goodyear welted boot. Boot comes with a Gore-Tex membrane, so as with the Klim Outlander, 
waterproofing is guaranteed for life. You've got strong foam back protectors in the ankles and again you've got the mandatory toe and heel counters again for protection. The inner sole as with pretty much all Daytona boots incorporates a hot and dip galvanized steel shank for transverse rigidity. The sole is designed for walking, but I suppose it's not designed for walking in the muddiest of conditions in the way that perhaps the sole is on the Klim Outlander. So you've got a bit of grip here, but this is still, in our view, a boot that's designed for road conditions rather than off-road conditions. The boot fastens by laces, but those laces run through these speed eyelets, and that's going to make the boots quite easy to fasten and unfasten. To make things a little bit easier, of course, you've got a zip that runs up the inside of the boots. But there's a waterproof gusset behind this zip, so you're still going to need to use the laces. The AC Classic is a classic looking ankle boot. You could wear them with a technical suit, but as with most short boots, we reckon they're gonna work best when worn with jeans. The boots come in two colors. They come in this color brown, but also in black. If you were to put us on the spot and ask us what our favorite short motorcycle boot is, we'd probably plump for these. These are the Roka Urban Racers. The first thing is the boot just looks the part. It looks right, the proportions are so right. It's difficult to find fault with the aesthetics on this boot. The boot looks classic, it's handsomely rugged, yet I think it's smart enough to wear into the office. The boot is indeed very rugged. The outer chassis is a heavy duty hydrophobic leather. Interestingly, there's no membrane, but the leather has been treated for waterproofing as part of the tanning process. And all we can say is, as long as the leather is fed now and again, the Urban Racers are very waterproof. The Urban Racer, as opposed to the Daytona boot that we looked, on, looked at earlier on, has a proper Goodyear welt. And what that means is that the outer sole, the midsole and the upper sole are sewn together through this welt that runs around the edge of the boot. Between the outer sole and the midsole, there's a layer of cork. And this is how all the best boots are made in Northampton. What the cork does, over time it takes an impression of your foot and that makes the boot over time incredibly comfortable. The construction also means that it's really easy to change the sole again and again. The outer sole, by the way, is a tough Vibram sole. The Urban Racer boot, if looked after, is still gonna be rocking in 10 to 15 years time. There is one technical point that I should make, however. The Urban Racer is not technically CE approved. Yet, regardless of this, in our view, it is still one of the strongest and most protected boots that we sell. You also need to know that these boots are not going to be comfortable from day one. They're just too tough for that. You're going to need to wear them in over a period of time. Eventually, what we know is, because we have sold a lot of these boots, we know that they are going to be comfortable like slippers. But you have to wear them in. You wear them for a day, then you don't wear them for two days, then you wear them for a couple of days, you build them up, they will eventually be incredibly comfortable. Another thing, you will not, if you want to do further research, find these boots on Roka's website, on Roka's Swiss website. They discontinued the boot because it was very expensive to make. We jumped up and down and said, this is the boot we like. We didn't like as much its replacement. And so Roka make this boot for the UK only. It comes, by the way, in two colors. This is brown, the other one is called black. It's also brown. We have chosen most of the boots for this review on the basis of the quality of their construction and on the quality of the components that go into them. But we've chosen the Falco Ranger for a different reason. This is quite simply, we believe, the most comfortable short boot we sell. I have to admit that I've never personally worn a pair, but those customers who have bought a pair invariably come back and tell us that these are the nicest boots they've ever worn. Now, in other respects, the Ranger has all of the bits that you would expect, but I don't think it's an extraordinary boot. It's made from an oil-treated leather. It's another one of those boots that appears to have a Goodyear welt. In fact, the stitching here around the edge is quite authentic, but despite what Falco says on their website, this is not a Goodyear welted boot. It just is not. The Falco website also says that the boot has a Vibram sole. The old version did. It was a very lightweight Vibram sole. This boot has a different sole. It's still quite a rugged sole, but it's not a Vibram sole. For protection, you get those counters in the toe and the heel, which as we've said before, you get in every boot. You've got D3O style pucks. In fact, I think these are actually D3O pucks in the ankles. 
Waterproofing comes courtesy of a Hitex membrane. To get in and out of the boots, you've got this zip that runs up the inside, but as normal with these boots, because there's a gusset behind the zip, you're still going to need to use the laces. Now, this is a cool looking boot that will work well with jeans, but I still think it's smart enough to wear to the office. But let me say one thing about a pair of boots like this. This is not the kind of boot that I think you could undertake an arduous daily commute in. These boots and boots like this are designed for the casual weekend rider. If you commute in a boot like this, you're gonna get, I don't know, maybe one or two years out of them. They are not designed for the daily grind. It's merely a matter of horses for courses. The Rangers are lovely to wear, but they are what they are. They come, by the way, in two colors, in brown, but in black as well. We've included the Held Saxons in this review because they represent a very compelling proposition. The boot is of the very highest quality. It's manufactured from the finest ingredients. Indeed, I think it's almost a match for the Daytona AC Classic boot, but this boot is a hundred pounds less expensive than the Daytona, so it offers exceptional value. Normally, I would suggest that value for money is not a criterion that would justify inclusion in a review like this, but the value of this boot is a little bit outstanding. Now, as a boot, the outer shell is a full grain cowhide. You get protective counters in the toe and the heel and padded pucks in the ankle. It has to be said that this boot feels much more protective, much more robust than your average short boot. The membrane is by Gore-Tex, which means that they are guaranteed to be waterproof by life. The sole is by Vibram, but it's very much, as you can see, a road-based sole rather than an off-road sole. You get a zip up the inside of the boot to make getting in and out of the boot somewhat easier. Now, historically, we've had very, very few problems with the Saxons, but it's good to know that if you do ever get any issues with the boot, it comes with a five-year warranty, which is the warranty that Held gives to any of its boots that come with a Gore-Tex membrane. It's got to be said that that's a better warranty than you get from anyone else in the motorcycle boot market. In every respect, therefore, this is a superior boot, but the price makes it an exceptional one. It comes, by the way, in two colors, in this color, also in black. The Daytona AC Dry is different to most of the boots in this review in that it's a short touring boot. You don't buy the AC Dry because you want to look cool. It's not classically the kind of boot you'd probably wear with jeans, although we have many customers who we know do wear the boot with jeans. Funnily enough, Daytona termed this boot a sneaker, but I think that tells us a lot about Daytona. Daytona isn't really a brand that's renowned for its fashionability or its fashion credentials. But what this boot lacks in the cool stakes, it makes up for in functionality. It's made from a combination of smooth leather, nubuck leather, and perforated leather. The membrane is by Gore-Tex, so as with other Gore-Tex boots that we've looked at, this boot is guaranteed to be waterproof for life. The boot feels and wears more like a traditional touring boot than a traditional ankle boot. The soft leather, therefore, will give the rider great feel on the pegs. Now, whereas most ankle boots have been designed to wear with jeans, as we've discussed, the AC dries are meant to be worn with a technical textile pant. The boots are as protective as you might expect a Daytona to be. So again, as with lots of the boots that we've discussed, you've got these counters in the toe and the heel. You've got reinforced pucks in the ankle. You've actually got a plastic reinforced inner sole and the galvanized hot dip steel inlay embedded into the sole. One of the things that we really like about the AC dry is the height of the shaft. Now, short boot, as we know, will be less waterproof than a tall one. But the AC dries are going to be more waterproof than most short boots because this shaft sits somewhat higher. The boots fasten by means of laces, but to make life easier, these laces run through what are known as speed loops. It's going to make the boots easier to do up, easier to undo. Usefully, you've got this pocket here at the top of the tongue, enables you to tuck the laces in there to stop them flying about. They can't get caught on anything. You also get this zip up the inside of the boot. As ever, with a waterproof boot, you're not going to be able to get away with using the zip and not using the laces, but by having a zip, it just means you've got to undo the laces less fast, so to speak. The AC dry is not like the other short ankle boots that we're reviewing here today. Technically, I suppose this is a an ankle boot, but we tend to think of the AC dry as really just a slightly shorter, tall boot. Comes in an array of colors, all of them, however, are black. There are lots of motorcycle 
trainer style boots on the market. We sell a number of them, but we're not always great fans of these boots. Most are not particularly protective. One of the reasons we like the hypers is that they are that little bit higher in the shaft. Some might term this in fact more a high top than a sneaker. Now all CE approved motorcycle boots come with the required protectors, but low height, the low height of some trainers can leave riders a little bit vulnerable. That's why we like the Hyper. It's simply going to be more protective than most trainer style boots. Now the boot comes equipped with a dry text waterproof membrane. And again here, the higher shaft is going to make this boot more waterproof than those trainers that have a lower shaft. The boot fastens by means of laces and here perhaps is the only real weakness of the Hyper. It is a taller shaft, but we don't have speed loops here. And the extra height of this shaft can mean that this boot is not the easiest or the quickest to get in and out of. In terms of protection and counters, you get all of the things in this boot that you would expect. So you've got counters in the toe, in the heel, you've got pucks in the ankles. We really like the Hypers. They are not your average motorcycle trainers. They also happen to be particularly comfortable, even for a trainer. The Helston's Legend boot is so cool because Helston's make it exclusively for us here at Moto Legends. So you're gonna to have to forgive us if we are perhaps a little bit biased. The boot is based on a Helston style called the Liberty. That's a boot that we've always liked and indeed we continue to offer that boot. Liberty is a simple but extremely stylish and comfortable boot. The outer chassis is made from a calfskin as is the lining. Sandwiched between the two layers of calfskin is a waterproof membrane. Now, like every boot in this category, you get counters in the toe and the heel, you get pucks in the ankle. The outer sole of this boot is flat. Now, that's not gonna work for you if you're looking for a little bit of extra height on the bike, but the flat sole means that the boot is much easier to move up and down the pegs on the bike. That is to say, you don't have a heel that's gonna get in the way. In the past, we have spoken to a number of boot manufacturers about making a motorcycle version of the famous Red Wing 875 boot. Now that's a boot that's very popular with the hipster crowd. It became famous, I suppose, when bikers became aware that it was a boot that Steve McQueen often rode in. Now, we like that Red Wing boot. It's a well-made boot that will never wear out, but it's not in any way protective. In fact, it offers no protection whatsoever. But realizing that the Liberty was not totally dissimilar to the Red Wing in terms of design, we asked Helsons if they could make a version for us. We asked them to use the same Oro Legacy leather that is a hallmark of the classic Red Wing boot. Now, unfortunately, that wasn't quite possible, but I think Helsons got pretty darn close with this leather. We are really pleased with the result. The Legend is a fully protective biking boot. It is super comfortable. It's super stylish. And if you're looking to add a bit of King of Cool style to your biking, the Legend might just hit the spot. This is the Trickers Legend boot. Now, Trickers has been making gentlemen's boots since 1829. In fact, they've been making them in the same factory in Northampton since 1904. King Charles wears Trickers shoes, and indeed the company has long been considered to be the maker of the world's best boots. Now, we've been working with Trickers since about 2016, and every year what we do, we go along to see them and we select a boot from their archive and we turn that boot into something that could pass for a motorcycle boot. And I suppose that's the thing. Even we're not going to suggest that our triggers are proper motorcycle boots. Yes, we add a gear change pad across the toe, but these boots are not C approved. That having been said, these boots are probably as strong as just about any boot that we sell. They are made entirely by hand. They've got a good year welted construction, so they're supremely comfortable and will last forever. Each boot takes about three hours to make. Technically, it has to be said that these boots are not waterproof, but the MC leather that we have chosen for this boot is water resistant. So I figure that in rain, you might get an hour or so's riding before the rain starts to seep through. So what is a Trickers boot? Well, lovely is what it is. Everybody should own a pair of totally handmade boots at some point in their life. Boots like this just feel very special. And with some looking after with a degree of TLC, they'll be treading the earth long after you are. Of course, boots like this are potentially just too nice to commute in. And I have to say, you probably wouldn't want to be touring in them either. A Trickers boot in our view is for Sunday best. These are boots, these are the kind of boots you wear when you want to put on the style. 
Obviously, you don't even have to ride the bike in them. I often wear mine in the office or when I just want to go out for a walk. These are just bloody fine boots. They are bloody expensive, but they are bloody fine. We've already touched upon the fact that we're not particularly impressed by the protective qualities of many or most sneaker style motorcycle boots, which is why we tend to favor the former hypers over many of them. But there is another sneaker style boot that we deem to be a notch above the rest. And it's this boot, it's called the Sermione and it comes from the German brand Held. Now, the Sermione looks like your average sneaker boot, but in truth, it's not. It's like a sneaker boot that's been on a course of muscle building steroids. The leather is thicker, the sole is deeper, the sole is stiffer, and the protectors, the counters, are stronger and more robust. Now, Held is one of the motorcycle world's best kept secrets. This company makes proper gear. It's always well specced and it's always well put together. The boot we have here, the Sermione Gore-Tex, comes obviously with a Gore-Tex membrane, and that means it's guaranteed to be waterproof for life. There's another version, by the way, that comes without a membrane and with perforated leather. The sole is by Vibram, but it's not an off-road sole, it's a boot that's very much designed for on-road riding. I suppose with everything that has gone into the Sermione boots, they might not be immediately the most comfortable sneaker boots on the market. But whilst nobody wants to be uncomfortable in a boot, we sometimes have to weigh comfort against protection. Remember, motorcycle gear is there to protect you. You're not buying a pair of slippers. And frankly, some of the sneaker boots that we come across in this market don't feel as though they're gonna offer much more in terms of protection than you'll get on a pair of sneakers that you might pick up at somewhere like, I don't know, Foot Locker. The Sermiones are without doubt fashioned in the sneaker style, but they're simply going to offer a lot more protection than most such boots. And as they are Gore-Tex boots, Held back them up with a five-year warranty. The boots come in three colorways. There's this colorway, there's a red colorway, and there's also a white with red stripes. I think that's probably a little bit of a mistake for the motorcycle market, but anyway, they're lovely boots. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you'd like to see more short boots, visit the website motorlittings.com. If you'd like to look at all of our short boots, then we've created a section for those boots. If you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you directly to that section. Now, when you're there, you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail on any of the boots. You can check out availability, and obviously you can buy a pair of boots there and then if you so wish. When you buy from us, we try to make the process simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free. And what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. Then we have the best price promise in the business. John Lewis was rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise, but we go one stage better. If you can find any retailer selling anything that we sell at a price that is below ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a full 10%. Now there are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call our price beat guarantee. So if you want to attempt to price beat us, I suggest you go over to the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new products, then go to the website. At the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on that, within seconds you'll be in business. If, however, you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say, in this form, we'd be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Finally, I'd like to close with mention of our fabulous little shop here at Motor Legends. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station, and as I've suggested, the shop has a small footprint. But it is attached to our warehouse where we have some four million pounds worth of stock arranged over three floors. And that technically makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we would like to think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. And when you come to see us, we'll serve you any of the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And if you're lucky, who knows, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.